Alright guys, welcome to another Corvette video where we're going to talk about radiators. If you go on eBay, you can see that, you know, there's radiators that are, you know, $150, $200 and they go all the way up to like $1,200 on a radiator for the same car. Uh, there's different materials, there's different makers, but what we have here is what I call the $150 eBay special. So, um, there are radiators, they're all made in China, that fit these Corvettes and you know what they cause a lot more problems than good so i have to replace this radiator and i'm going to show you a few of the drawbacks when it comes to buying the 200 dollars radiator or the 150 dollars radiator and not buying the six seven eight hundred dollar radiator so the first thing is going to be well quality so this guy has had this radiator in probably for a year maybe two years and it's already leaking out the side of the tank so when the car gets hot, it drips coolant. It's not from any of the hoses. It's actually from a weld down here on the side of the tank. When I get it out, I'll show that to you here later in the video. The second thing I want to show you is, well, the fit. So these radiators are designed to be held in rubber pads. There's one here and there's one on the bottom of the core support that's very, very similar. And the edges of the tank are supposed to be raised and supposed to fit in these rubber pads. As you can see, this one really kind of doesn't. You can see right here how the, the rubber pad is actually behind the metal and the metal is rubbing into the top of the radiator right here. If we come here along the other side, you can see kind of the same thing. Because you can kind of see it a little bit better. You have this red, this metal part rubbing into the tank. Now eventually this will rub through because steel is stronger than aluminum and it's going to rub through. The other problem, which isn't necessarily a part of the radiator, is that whoever installed this, they did a really crappy job of installing it. They did not replace any of the seals that go in between the radiator and the core support. So let me show you why these are important. As you can see, the radiator is slanted. I mean, it sits like this. Most cars, it sits straight up. And in most cars, there's a giant grill in the front that sucks in air and it goes straight into the radiator. Now in a Corvette, you can see, I mean, you can barely even see the radiator. It's all the way up back underneath all of this stuff right here. And in reality, when air comes, it's going to hit this air dam. It's going to go up into here. And then it's, it's going to want to go anywhere but through the radiator. And obviously, you want air to go through the radiator. So what it's going to do is it's going to come from underneath the car. It's going to hit the core. Then it's going to shoot out the top, shoot out the sides, or shoot out the bottom. And without those seals, that's the, where the air is going to go, and your car will run hotter without the seals. Uh, whoever put this in did not replace the seals. Now, giving them the benefit of the, doubt, of the doubt, maybe they didn't know because they were gone already. But when we replace it, we're going to do a better job than that. So we will get going on ripping this radiator out, and I will show you what the seals do and then we'll, we'll compare this radiator which is two hundred dollars to the other radiator which was like eight hundred dollars and see the difference in quality and fit i didn't even get started and the quality is already crappy let me show you what i'm talking about step one to removing a radiator is drain the coolant i can't because I can't turn this thing at all because it hits the support. Because in a Corvette, there's a little edge that those are sticking out to the side. Great. All right, we got the radiator out. And remember, this is not an old radiator. This is maybe, remember, this is not an old radiator. This is a fairly new one. You can see we got some leakage up here at the top of the tank. And then, looks like a little more down here. Again, it didn't leak a lot, but it leaked when it was pressurized. You can see a little wetness down here. And it just, I mean, eventually all the coolant will leak out. And something like this should last longer than, well, a year. <laughs> so, uh, here I will show you the difference between this one and then the correct one. While we're waiting on the new radiator to come, you see posts all the time about people having trouble removing the shroud and I can't remove the fan shroud and I 
busted the radiator, removing the shroud and blah, blah, blah. Well, here's the thing. You remove the radiator first and then you put the shroud in. It never gets talked about and no one ever does it the correct way. They always want to remove the shroud first and then the radiator, but watch this. Let me just show you how easy it is to remove the shroud once the radiator's gone. I mean, check it out, look. One-handed, you lift up, you lift over, and it comes right out. Look, just like that. No breaking, no cutting, no bending, no messing up your radiator, and that's how they did it at the factory. Putting it back might be a little bit harder one-handed, but it'll go in, there we go. Just like that. See guys, it's not hard. All right, our DeWitt's radiator's in which is four times as much as that one. And we're gonna compare side to side the differences between the two. So here is the side by side. So a couple of differences I see is just the size of the tanks. So you see this, these are specific size to fit in the little rubber feet that hold the radiator in. And this one is obviously too small. Uh, the neck on this <coughs> is two sizes. This one's one. I believe the, the hose that went on this was too big for this. And so they had to clamp it down really, really tight. So there's another difference. This tank's not as different, I don't feel like, other than obviously the width again. Um, the bottom neck is a little prettier on this one versus this one. But the biggest difference I feel like there is, and we already showed this earlier in the video, is the location of the drain. This one's a little farther over, which means it should open whenever uh, it is needed. But as for the cooling core, I mean, I guess this has two big rows in it. And this has, this one has three smaller rows in it. So which one's better? I don't know, but it's totally up to you which one you want to use. I feel like the, the fins in here are a little bit more compact compared to the ones in that one. Do they cool any different? We will see, but they do fit a lot better. So I feel like the quality is better. Is the cooling better? That's going to be up to you. So there you go. That's the difference between a cheap $150 Chinese radiator and an eight, $900 Dewitch radiator. It's up to you which one you buy, but now you know the difference.